a deep, warm system was changing, sending pressure, heat, and gas upward along a buried pathway under the river. Section 6. Field teams go to work, drilling and mapping. Models can tell a story, but scientists need real samples. So field teams drilled a few shallow cores and set up borehole sensors. Drilling under a riverbed is not easy. The river moves, sediment shifts. Still, scientists used carefully planned sites on dry banks and islands to reach deeper layers. Cores revealed layers of sand, silt, and older gravels. In a few places, cores hit zones of fine clay with veins of mineral alteration. Those veins had minerals that form when hot fluids pass through rock. The altered zones extended at depth, meaning fluids had flowed there in the past. Borehole temperature logs confirmed the warmed water. Downhole sensors measured pressure pulses that matched the surface tremor timing. That was a key link. The pulses seen on seismometers were the same ones felt as pressure waves in the boreholes. That tied the surface uplift, the tremors, and the fluids into a single system. Teams also ran portable magnetics and resistivity surveys. These tools can map underground structures without deep drilling. They found a zone of lower resistivity under the dome. Low resistivity often points to warm saline fluids or partially altered rock. That gave another sign that fluids were present in a broad volume beneath the river. Taken together, the field data made the models more likely to be correct. A deep, pressurized fluid system, warmed by nearby heat, traveling along weak rock under the river. Section 7. 